Welcome, uh, everyone. Thank you, Fatumata, Victoria, and to uh, Marcus to having this session with Ninti. Uh, this is pa part of our Welcome to the Ninti series, and I'm uh, Olga. Uh, together with Fatumata, we uh, established Ninti a few months ago, and we're still at the beginning of the journey, which is very exciting. And we uh, today we're supported by many amazing colleagues uh, and experts um, in uh, sexual reproductive health. And I'm excited to co-host uh, today's, uh, today's session with both Fatumata and Dr. Walker from Institut Marques. Uh, so maybe just to give you a few words uh, about NINTI. So NINTI, uh, uh, we see it as a one step of 360 uh, uh, digital health uh, solution for women, um, for moments that matter. And these moments we really uh, want you to define by yourself because we are all different. Uh, and we really want uh, Ninti to be able to be tailored to the needs uh, and the moments of life that you are currently going through. And that's why we uh, focus on pillars of education, tailored healthcare support by connected women to specialists uh, like uh, um, uh, Institut Marquez uh, and guiding them in the best healthcare choices possible. So really, we do really believe that it's uh, important to have uh, these type of solutions available in for you as individuals, but also we try to enable companies uh, to support organizations around the world to support people better, support women, uh, female and their uh, families better in their uh, healthcare choices. And healthcare needs to be redesigned to some extent to be truly equal and put women's health priority um, at the top of their list. So maybe uh, we'll start with Dr. Worker. Uh, can you please uh, tell us about yourself and your background? And then we will uh, start with the uh, official presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome to everyone um, who's here online and, and interested in egg vitrification. My name is Victoria Walker. I'm one of the doctors at the Institute Marques. I'm actually a GP by training. Um, and did that for a few years and then moved to Spain. And I've been working for the Institute Marques now for ooh, 16 or 17 years. So sort of from, uh, from general practice into the more specialist area of fertility. Um, and so I'm here today to talk to you about vitrification and uh, I hope you'll find it a useful presentation. That's what we want and, and the useful and the discussion afterwards to be useful as well. So, oh, hang on, <laughs> see if I can pass that back in. Not letting me change page, hang on a second. Let's see if I can do it a different way. Sorry. Hang on, what's happening here? Uh, Maybe if you click on it, that, okay. There we go, oh, that's yeah. right. okay. All right, uh, sorry about that. So um, when is the right time to have a baby? Now, um, I'm in my early 50s, my mother's in her late 70s. And as a child, I remember her saying, she used to quote the doctor that looked after her during her pregnancies. And he used to, it was a man and he used to say, I like my women to have their pregnancies before they're 30. And I remember even as a child thinking that collective of my women was a really odd kind of turn of phrase, but the concept that he was put, trying to put across, the idea that women should try and have their pregnancies before the age of 30 fits with humanity and the way we are, because women really should, if possible, try to have their pregnancies before they're 30, because that is when the female body is most able to fall pregnant and most able to carry a pregnancy safely. But it doesn't fit with life as we live it today. The average woman is having her first baby age 32. And the problem occurs, that well, the problem is that our fertility starts to decrease around the age of 35. So vitrification, the freezing of eggs, is an alternative to having our baby in our 20s and our 30s before it's maybe too late to fall pregnant naturally. So here you've got an image of, uh, that tries to transmit our changing chances of success as we get old, older. 
So uh, the idea is that with egg or egg or oocyte vitrification is that you try to preserve the fertility of your younger, and in this image, bigger self for, you, for use when you yourself are older and smaller in this picture, uh, rather than just watching your chances of success dwindle with age, okay? So you can see at 25, your chance of success might be 20%. And when you get to 38, it's gone down to about 3% or around there. And so why do our chances of success dwindle with age when we in our late 30s still feel and look great and we still have regular periods? Well, it's because with time and increasing age, the genetic quality of the eggs that we produce goes down. So here in this image, you can see on the bottom row, if a woman under the age of 35 produces about 10 eggs, on average, three will be genetically abnormal. So those are the red ones. But as she gets older and reaches maybe 38 to 40, and produces 10 eggs. About seven of those eggs will be abnormal. And then when she gets to 42, 43, nearly all of them will be abnormal. So this is the problem. It's not that we're not producing eggs, we can't produce eggs. It's the quality of the eggs that goes down. So that's why you need to think when you're younger and your egg quality is better, you might want to consider freezing the eggs. So who should consider freezing their eggs? We would suggest that the group could include women who just can't or don't want to have a pregnancy in the immediate future. For personal, so maybe women who don't have a female, don't have a male companion, so either they haven't found the right guy or they're in a female relationship or they're just single at the moment or maybe for professional reasons. So you're focusing on your career, getting established in life, getting a home, whatever it is that's important to you at the moment. Another group that may want to consider freezing eggs would be people who uh, are going to have a treatment for cancer. And this, the treatments for this illness uh, can often affect egg quality. So they often want to freeze eggs before they go undergo the treatment the cancer. There are some women who prefer not to actually make embryos at the moment and either because they haven't found the right person or because ethically they feel uncomfortable freezing embryos that may not subsequently be, be used. So you're initiating life but maybe won't use them. So some people don't like that concept. And then there are some women who've just done some general health checks and they found that they have a low ovarian reserve. So maybe for work or something, they've done some tests and it's shown that they have a low AMH, so anti-malarian hormone, or very few antral follicles in their ovaries and it's a surprise for them. And they're suddenly thinking, oh gosh, what can I do? What can I do? And one of the things they can consider doing is trying to freeze their eggs. So what does vitrification involve? Well, the thing you have to remember is that it is a medical procedure. So if you have the opportunity to fall pregnant naturally, that should always be your first option, okay? But if for whatever reason, as we've just discussed, you can't consider that, then you can consider taking the option of vitrification. So how does it work? Let's take a step back. In our natural menstrual cycle, if you have one every month, we will create one follicle in one of our ovaries every month. This follicle will then ovulate and release an egg into one of our fallopian tubes. There, it might or might not meet some sperm, and if it does, we might feel pregnant. But if no fertilization occurs, then no implantation can occur, and we have our period at the end of the cycle to show we're not pregnant. So that's so far so normal. In the vitrification cycle, we override that natural cycle 
to push the ovaries to produce multiple eggs in both ovaries at the same time. So we do this by means of daily subcutaneous injections that the patients can give themselves at home. The injections usually continue for about 10 days. And then you have the egg collection, which is performed under sedation on about day 13 or 14 of your menstrual cycle. This process, the anesthesia sedation, takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do, it's not long. We then take you to the recovery area where we give you a drink, make sure you feel okay after anesthesia. And in that same time when you're coming round, your eggs are taken to the lab, they're counted, so we see how many there are, and then they're frozen, they're vitrified. So vitrification is the name given to the technique that we use to freeze the eggs. It involves something, uh, well, a fast freezing so that ice crystals don't have time to form inside the embryos. This is really useful as the survival rate from vitrified eggs is very good. They don't burst. So here is a, a, a slide with a bit So if we look at the top, uh, the top line, um, we have, we use a contraceptive pill to organize the treatment in Barcelona, and then a daily subcutaneous injection starting around day three of your cycle. So we're following the very top line here. You continue with your daily injections and on day eight, and probably about day 10 of your cycle, we'll ask you to have ultrasounds in your own country to see how your ovarian follicles are evolving. We want to know how many there are and how big they are. Some people will need a third ultrasound on around day 12, but not everyone. And then about 36 hours after the final injection, we'll have the egg collection as I described it earlier in Barcelona. And then if you move down to the bottom of the slide, when it comes to using the eggs at a later date, we shall prepare you for the process with oral medication at that stage. The eggs fertilized by either your partner or a donor sperm, whichever is appropriate for you. And then we take the embryos through to day five. Here you can see D1, two, three, four, five. We take them through the embryos through to day five and hope, um, just one second, yes. Yes, um, we take them, through, sorry, I've just missed a bit. <laughs> um, we take them through to day five and you can watch them um, in the laboratory, you can see them there in the laboratory evolving uh, using an app we call the Embryo Mobile. And some of the embryos will do really well in that time and others will not. And so we wait to day five to see which is the strongest embryo. And you have uh, embryo transfer usually on day five. This process is quite easy for you because at this point it's the embryos that are doing all the hard work. And you then have to wait and see if the pregnancy test is, uh, is, is positive or not. You may find, you may want to know what the PGT means. Um, the PGT stands for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis or testing. And that refers back to the image that I showed you with the red and the green dots. Depending on your age, you have more or less eggs, more or fewer eggs that are genetically normal. So if you are using your eggs uh, that have been frozen when you're slightly older, you, want, you might want to test the embryos to make sure they're genetically normal before you put them back into your own uterus. And so that's what PGT testing is. It's testing the embryos made with your eggs and the sperm of your partner or a donor before putting them back into your uterus 
to make sure they're genetically normal. Okay, so that's that's the process of PGT. It's a relatively the whole thing is looks very complicated, I think, on the, on this, but it's it's actually quite easy, and most people find it a completely tolerable uh, process for themselves. Uh, I don't know how to go back now because uh, there's there's a slide that's jumped a slide seems to have jumped a slide but anyway, um, so how many eggs would you need? How many eggs might you need in uh, in this process? It's quite hard to say, um, but you need to understand that the process of vitrification not every egg will create an embryo, and not every embryo will make a will make a pregnancy and not every pregnancy will reach term and create a, a live birth. And so um, there is quite a high attrition rate in terms when you go from the eggs down to the embryo numbers and the pregnancies that implant. Maybe if I give you an example, um, I have a couple, a female couple who live in Switzerland, and they came to us because in Switzerland you can't have sperm donation when you're a female couple. And so the, the woman who came to us, the woman who in the female couple who was having a stimulation, um, she, she was only 29, she doesn't have any infertility, so she's very similar to all these, to the patients that might want to be thinking about vitrification. And she responded very well to the stimulation. She gave about 25 eggs. And of course, because they wanted to fall pregnant, this female couple wanted to fall pregnant, we fertilized the eggs. So uh, we used the donor sperm and the 25 eggs made 18 embryos. But at the end of that five day period that I showed you in the previous slide, only six embryos were left and they had their pregnancy from those six embryos. But you can see that the number of eggs at the beginning, uh, there's, a, there's a, a quite a high loss of numbers to get you to the embryo at the end. Okay, so that's why sometimes people say, well, what if I only need one egg? Um, to fall pregnant, why do I need more? Well, it's because in the IVF process, when you actually use those eggs at the end, you want to try and maximize your chances of success and not have to do too many cycles. And so you want to try and create a certain group number of eggs at the beginning to try and maximize your chance of success later when you use them. All right. So here in, in these FAQs, uh, we may go through this um, again in our discussion, but here are some quick fire answers to the, to the question. So is egg freezing indicated in my case, in my particular case? Well, it depends very much on your age and personal circumstances. I would say that if you can fall pregnant naturally, then do try that. But if you aren't in circumstances that allow you to do this, and yet you want to try to preserve your fertility for the future, then consider vitrification. Can I live a normal life without undergoing stimulation? Can I live a normal life whilst I'm undergoing stimulation? Yes, absolutely. When you're doing the stimulation, you live normally, you continue to work, you continue to do everything in your normal life. The only thing is that on the day of egg collection, we would ask you to just spend the rest of the day, the remainder of the day resting, okay? But the day after normal life, go back to work, everything. Does the treatment have side effects? Yes, some people will get uh, bruises where they inject themselves and some people find that the progesterone, one of the hormones that goes up, can make them quite constipated. And these are common side effects. Rare side effects would include something called hyperstimulation, where you produce an awful lot of eggs, more than the doctors are expecting for your particular case. However, we give you medication to try to stop this from happening. And if it does occur, then you're protected by the fact that in that 
specific cycle of vitrification, you're not going to be falling pregnant. You're going to be falling pregnant years later when your ovaries have gone back to normal. Okay. Does egg freezing affect my ovarian reserve? No, we don't believe it does. How many eggs do I need to produce? As before, it really depends on your age and ovarian reserve. How long can my eggs stay frozen? Many years. Their quality doesn't appear to deteriorate with time. So in summary, if you would like to preserve your fertility for the future, knowing that in general, the fertility of a woman goes down from about the age of 35, then please do consider egg vitrification. It can help you to avoid regrets later in life. But don't forget that it's still a medical treatment. So falling, falling pregnant naturally is still your best option if possible for you. And secondly, not all eggs you produce will make a viable embryo. So it's not a treatment that can offer a guarantee of a live birth at the end. It's just trying to maximize your chances of having one, but there's no guarantee that you will, okay? And so here are a few images of our center in Barcelona. Uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch to request a visit if you'd like to take the idea of vitrification forwards. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Victoria, for this insightful and uh, very interesting presentation.